All right, guys, let's take a look at our next problem. So over here, they're saying that a roller coaster has a mass of 500 kilograms when fully loaded with passengers, as seen in the figure below. If the vehicle has a speed of 15 meters per second at point A, what is the force of the track on the vehicle at this point? And part B says, what is the maximum speed the vehicle can have at point B and still somehow remain on the track? Okay, so in this problem, guys, there's a few things that you need to understand. First of all, um, you should realize that the motion of your particle is a curved one, right? And the fact that they're showing you guys circles over here, um, you know, should make a bell go off in your head. Essentially, in order to understand this problem, it is probably a good idea to talk about centripetal acceleration um, a little bit. So before we go there, you should understand that acceleration um, arises due to different factors. From a kinematics point of view, a body can accelerate due to a change in velocity. From a dynamics point of view, a body can accelerate if there is a net force acting on the body. Right now, for starters, let's concern ourselves with the kinematics point of view for acceleration. So we said that acceleration can arise due to a change in velocity. Now, we understand that velocity is a vector. It contains both magnitude and direction, as every vector does. And it turns out that if either one of these two guys end up changing, this is going to give rise to some sort um, of acceleration. So let's find them. If the magnitude changes, you will have tangential acceleration. The, this is the acceleration that we've been working with in our kinematics problems where we build our table with VI, VF, ADT. However, it is possible that the magnitude does not change, but the direction does. It is possible for you to drive at the exact same speed always and still have acceleration because your direction might be changing. If there's a change in direction, this gives rise to a second part of acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, and this comes with a formula. The centripetal acceleration, sometimes also called the radial acceleration, can be calculated as v squared over r. Guys, this is something that you need to pretty much um, keep in your head. The minute you see a problem that has circular motion in it in some way, shape, or form, you will guaranteed apply this formula. Just like you've trained yourself, if somebody says constant velocity, you say acceleration is zero, the same exact way, if you see a circle, you automatically spit out this equation and apply it. Now that we've kind of understood this, let's take a look at the two parts to our problem. They're asking us for forces now, um, over here and over here. So the first part of the problem says, they're giving us the speed and they're saying what would be the force um, of the track on the vehicle at this point. Now obviously, if they are talking about forces, we want to solve this problem by building a free body diagram. So let's make our free body diagram over here, but before I do that, I understand that I'm going in a circular path. I know for a fact that I'm going to apply this formula. Let's see if I can first apply that formula, see if there's any ingredients that are missing, or I have everything I need. So they're saying for part A, the centripetal acceleration can actually be calculated because we know that the velocity is 15, that's given to us in the problem. And looking at the diagram, we can see that the radius is equal to 10. And so 15 squared is 225 divided by 10 will give us our acceleration of 22.5 meters per second squared. Let's make sure we just did that calculation properly, and it should be good. Now, since they're asking us for force, we understand to solve any force problem, the move is always to build a free body diagram. So let's talk about all of the forces that are acting on our particle at A. So if the roller coaster was here, obviously it has some weight, so there's going to be a weight pointing down, 
and the track will push back up because obviously if this was the only force it would go through the track through the earth right down to the center of the earth so obviously that's not happening there must be some force pushing back up so the two forces we have here is the weight which we know can be calculated as m times g might as well do that right away we know that the weight of everything is 500 or sorry the mass is 500 and if we multiply that by 4.9 i think we're going to get uh, 4.9 what am i saying 9.8 we're going to get 4900 newtons exactly and this would be the force of the track which i'll label as the normal force now that we've identified all of the forces acting um, on our object we can now apply newton's second law to answer the problem so newton's second law says that well obviously f equals ma or the sum of the forces, the net force is equal to ma, mass times acceleration. And we are going to analyze or apply this in only the y direction because there's nothing interesting going on in the x direction. Remember, this is a vector. So we're going to take a look at what is happening in the y direction only. OK, so let's apply that. If we apply this, um, you know, Maybe our instinct, if this is one of our first few problems, might say is that since this object over here is not moving up and down, the acceleration is zero, and Fn is equal to 4,900 newtons. However, if we understood what I explained a little bit earlier on, you would realize that that is not entirely correct. Okay, Because the acceleration is not zero, since the direction of the roller coaster is changing, there is an acceleration, there is a centripetal acceleration, and one thing I forgot to mention is that this acceleration always points towards the center of the circle. The centripetal acceleration is a vector that points always towards the center of the circle, um, and therefore the acceleration in our scenario will point upwards over here. And that lets us know that we should choose our positive direction here to be upward um, in the direction that the body is accelerating. So that will tell us that this guy is a positive value and anything that does not point towards the center of the circle in this equation would be a negative value. So setting this equation up will give us Fn positive minus 4900 is equal to our mass, which is given in the problem as 500 times our acceleration, which is what we calculated here. And so it's not going to take us long to solve for Fn. So Fn for us is going to be sixteen thousand one hundred and fifty newtons. Now this is a vector, so you're going to say upward or in the positive j direction. So that answers the first part of this question. Once again, realize that there is an acceleration here due to a change in direction and it's pointing upwards towards the center of the circle. The next question is a lot more interesting and it requires us to think a little bit. So let's repeat this problem answering um, B. So a B asks is what should be, well, let's take a look. What is the maximum speed the vehicle can have at point B and still remain on the track? So how fast can we be traveling up here at B and not jump off the track? Let's apply a similar analysis and then we'll think a little bit. So first things first, let's identify our forces. So we have the weight straight down, and the force of the track straight up, these are the only forces acting on this guy at the moment. So we have our weight, W, and it's not going to change. It's still 4,900. And we have our force of the track pointing upwards. Now, if we apply the exact same equation that we did previously, the sum of the forces in the Y is equal to MAY. These are vectors. 
but they're the Y components, so it's a little redundant writing the two things, but whatever. This time around, understand that acceleration is pointing downwards towards the center of the circle. This time around, he will be positive and he will be negative, right? The direction of the acceleration is going to dictate our positive direction. So plugging that in, positive, negative, towards the center of the circle, away from the center of the circle, is going to give us our mass, let's say it's 500. And remember our acceleration here is our centripetal acceleration, so it's going to be v squared divided by whatever our radius is, in this case, 50. So now we have a little problem. We have an equation with two unknowns in it. And so we need to start thinking a little bit. One way to solve this problem would be to somehow find another equation that has the same two unknowns and solve two equations to unknowns, but that seems a little tricky over here. So now we're going to have to think a little bit, okay? Let's take a look at what will happen as this roller coaster starts speeding up. So as it starts speeding up over here, let's say speed one, he goes right back down. Speed two, he goes back down, but it's approaching that moment where this guy is going about to jump off that track, right? They're saying, what is the maximum velocity I could have and so that this guy still remains on the track? Understand, right before that, right after that maximum, obviously he's going to jump right off. But right before that maximum, he's about to jump off. If you think about this hard enough, you're going to realize that as um, the, the roller coaster is speeding up, it is pushing less and less down on this track. And therefore, the track is pushing up less and less on to the roller coaster. So at the maximum speed, where this guy is right about to jump off the track, it'll barely be touching right there. And if it's barely touching right there, we can say that this normal force is going to approach zero when our velocity hits its maximum value. So there's a little bit of thinking involved there. Hopefully you guys were able to follow that. If you have any questions, let me know at the end of class and we'll try to go over this again. But right now, it's a matter of solving for V and that is basic algebra now, so let's get the job done. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to first of all divide these two numbers. So let's say 500 divided by 15. Now I'm going to take 4,900 and divide it by my answer. And then finally take the square root of my answer to give me a velocity equal to 12.12 meters per second. Um, and this is a tangential velocity. Um, it's going to be pointing right there. Hopefully that was helpful. It's a little bit of a tricky question, but try and understand why that guy is zero and that'll get the job done. All right, guys, let's move on to our next problem.